Good day everyone, I am Lim Wei Jie, I am a final year student from Civil Engineering Department in University of Malaya. Currently, I am having my internship as a site engineer trainee at Johan Sajiran Berhad. The project that I am involving in is G572 terraces at Bukit Jambu. In this video, we will focus on learning design and build of micropound. First of all, what is micropound? Generally, micropound is defined as a drilling pound with diameter smaller or equal to 300 mm. It consists of high carrying capacity of steel section, such as high tensile U-bar and API pipe. Comparing to caisson power and ball power, micropower is smaller in size, lighter in weight, faster installing, and creates less vibration and noise to surrounding. Micropower supports smaller working load as well. Usually, a 12 meter long micropower can be done constructing within 12 hours. Micropower is commonly applied at limestone formation areas where cavity is encountered. Besides, micropower also can be installed at various angles at slope area and is capable of resisting axial and lateral loads. Moreover, micropower is greatly utilized at underpinning of existing structure as well where the original foundation isn't strong or stable enough. The properties of the soil supporting the foundation may have changed, possibly through subsidence, or were mischaracterized during design. To increase the depth or load capacity of existing foundation to support the addition of working load. In some situations, Boulder is found on upper layer of the ground. Temporary casing is difficult to be installed if ball power is proposed to be constructed. This situation may might cause eccentricity of temporary casing as well due to rock falling from surrounding slope area. Thus, this situation is very convenient for micropower using ODEX hammer system to be constructed as temporary casing can be easily installed when drilling hole as it produces lower vibration compared to ball pound which preventing movement of rocks falling from slope area. Next, let us proceed to design concept of micropower. As working load acting on micropower, micropower will transfer structural loads from imperappropriate soil layers to solid foundation layer. Loads are transmitted from the foundation to the micropower steel and grout and then shed to the surrounding rock via high friction values. Firstly, the material used in constructing micropower is steel, cement grout, and non shrinkage additive. The compressive strength of cement grout applied is in 30 Newton per millimeter square. The non shrinkage additive used is Sika Intrapass Z. The additive added to cement grout is in the ratio of 0.01. Water to cement ratio is in the range of 0.45 to 0.5. Next, the structural design of micropower applied at G572 terraces is referring to Federal Highway Administration. It is to ensure the power is able to withstand the acting load on it. The allowable compression capacity of micropower QW, is equal to sum of 0.4 cement grout grade times net grout area and product of 0.47 U strength of reinforcement and area of steel. Here shows the calculation example. 
it is we've given that the working load is 1,400 kilo newton. Six steel bars with 32 millimeter diameter is adopted in 300 millimeter diameter micropower. As the structural capacity is higher than working load, it is said to be passed. Moving on to the geotechnical design of micropower. This is to ensure the adopted rock socket length is sufficient and safe to withstand the loading transfer from micropower. Here shows the formula relating to geotechnical design of micropower. The power working capacity is equal to the product of unique rock shaft friction, pi, power diameter, and length of rock socket divided by factor of safety against shaft friction. Minimum global safety of factor adopted is equal to 2.0. Here shows the calculation example. The ultimate unit shaft friction between cement and rock is 1650 kilopascal. The adopted rock socket length is 2.1 meter. As the FOS obtained is higher than 2.0, it is said to be passed. Last part of design is about anchorage bond between cement grout and reinforcement. This is to ensure the loading is well transferred from steel to cement grout and cement grout to steel. Minimum bond length is equal to product of working capacity and factor of safety against bond length divided by the product of ultimate bond stress, high number of reinforcing bar and diameter of reinforcing bar. Next shows the calculation example. Bond efficient is equal to 0.35 by assuming reinforcing bar as plain bar. Ultimate bond strength is then determined as 1.9 newton per millimeter square. The ultimate bond capacity is then calculated and is applied to determine factor of safety against bond length. The factor of safety obtained is said to be passed. Let us move on to the building concept of micropower. At first, surveying work will be carried out by surveyor and chain man to set out drilling point and survey existing ground level. After that, a drilling machine will be moved to the micropower position. Banksman will check the verticality of drilling road placed directly above the pouring point. Drilling of micropower with temporary casing is then commenced to the required depth. The drilling tool is powered by air compressor. Odex hammer bead is applied when drilling at soil layer. After heating rock layer, drilling tool is then lifted up. Drilling tool is then changed to DDH hammer bead after heating rock layer. Drilling work is then continued. From the video, we can observe that borehole is flush during drilling. When drilling the hole, workers will use spirit level to measure and ensure the verticality of drilling road is appropriate. After achieving desired rock socket length, drilling road will be lifted up. Drilling machine is then moved away. Next, the required length of micropower reinforcement rebar cage is fabricated according to design requirement. The reinforcement is then unloaded to the bottom of drill hole. Next, cement grout is pumped into the drill hole. Some portion of cement grout is collected for test cube. From the video, we can observe that water will be pumped into the drill hole at first to flush out the sediments. Cement grout is then pumped into drill hole through grout tube until good grout overflow.
temporary casing is then removed by using vibro hammer. Temporary casing shall be withdrawn slowly to ensure no necking of the pow at any level. No micropow excavation shall be carried out within a distance of 5 pow diameters center to center from an open pow under excavation or a pow which has been grouted less than 24 hours. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoy it.